guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna draw an action potential, just a regular old action potential in a neuron. So this should be review. You should be doing this along with me. We've got a graph of millivolts over time in milliseconds. Action potentials are pretty darn quick. You should be able to think about labeling this y-axis in terms of number of millivolts. The highest we might go up to is plus 40. Um, the lowest down here I'm gonna draw is, um, let's see, I'm gonna draw minus 90. And then we've got some stuff in between. Let's see, zero is gonna be something like right here and minus 40 is gonna be right here. Maybe not perfect scale, but you know, I'm only human. I'm going to draw our trace first of our action potential, changes over time, and then we'll label what's happening. So resting in a neuron is typically around minus 70. And then we're gonna have a stimulus that causes depolarization. When that reaches threshold, we're gonna have a rapid rise up to around minus 30, 40, followed by a repolarization, hyperpolarization, and then back to rest. So let's label a few more things on here. First, this is round right here. This would be our threshold. And resting memory potential is right here. Threshold. So what caused this here was the opening of gated what? Sodium channels. Gated, I could be a little more specific. So typically ligand gated, mechanically is the other option. So this could be due to a physical stimulus. Ligand would be due to like glutamate. Remember that um, at this point, this depolarization is due to the opening of what? Voltage gated sodium channels going to cause rapid depolarization because this is positive feedback. More depolarization causes more opening of voltage-gated sodium channels over and over again. Until you get up here, here we're going to start to inactivate those sodium channels. We're also going to have these slower opening. It's, it's slower to happen. That's why it doesn't happen until here. Um, opening of the, actually let me put it first. They're also voltage-gated potassium channels. This is the, around the time port, point when they start to open. The, I, I hope it was obvious when the sodium channels opened over here, sodium's gonna rush into the cell because there's high sodium outside the cell. There's high potassium inside the cell. So when you're up here, even though it's positive inside the cell now, there's still enough of a drive for potassium to leave. It's going to rush out, causing positive ions to leave the cell and the cell then becomes more negative. This is our hyperpolarization. This is our repolarization, right? This goes down to about minus 90. Um, during this time, those sodium channels go from inactivated back to um, closed so that they can open again. So this is that refractory period um, where you, it takes more, either you can't have another action potential or it takes a lot larger stimulus. So we've got a relative refractory period. And an absolute. And so I, I'm not gonna draw exactly where each one is. I don't have very good um, scale here. An absolute refractory period though is you can absolutely have no additional with extra additional with extra D's action potential. Um, and that's when those sodium channels are inactivated. Our relative is when it takes a larger stimulus.
because we're in hyperpolarization place here. So relative is going to be a longer period. These are going to be important for how our muscles work. So that's review of normal action potentials. Next, we'll look at the two different types of cardiac muscles, both the autorhythmic or pacemaker and the actual my myocardial um, contractile cells.